Good morning. Are you trying to open an online store this year? Well, I've been thinking there is a lot of changes going on with our blog, Nina Soap. I'm thinking about moving my online store from Nina Soap to you know, to have a separate from Nina Soap blog. And I have been waiting, waiting all the options and I have done a lot of research and went back and forth between uh, different options. And this morning I started, um, I did a lot of research as well. And I'd like to share a few tips with you just in case you are in the same situation because I have noticed that many uh, people who uh, that wanted to start private, a private label, labeling this year are wondering whether they should incorporate their business or just operate as a sole proprietor. Well, what I wanted to say is with Nina Soap, I, when I originally started in a soap, it was just to share my information with everybody else that would be in the same situation looking for natural products and wanted to, you know, to learn more information about it, how to use natural product without spending too much money, you know. And I started sharing a lot of information there based on my experience because it was so hard for me when I started to find the information that I needed and what I found was so valuable that I wanted to share my experience as well and put it out there. So it was more about sharing the information and now that I wanted to monetize my blog, take it to the next level, turn it into a business. So uh, my goal is changing. And when I started in a soap, a year later, I start selling soap on Etsy, natural soap, just in case somebody cannot make it or doesn't have time to make it, you know, he or she can buy it. So I start selling it there with other natural products. And too recently, I opened a online store on Nina Soap and I started selling it there as well. So now, the, the thing is, now that I wanted to add more product to it, I sat down with my husband to weigh all some of our options. And we don't think that the brand Nina Soap is well related to the brand that we want to have for our other products. So after a minute discussion, we decided that we are just going to move the online store off of Nina Soap and have a different, um, have it totally separate. But the blog Nina Soap is going to be the main blog for all our businesses because we have other businesses. And I have been adding more feature, more, uh, topic to Nina so not just natural product that I started with now we talk about finances gardening cooking and managing business so I pretty much include a lot of things that I originally I was so focused on one things that I didn't really plan long term and and up even until now I still don't feel comfortable for all those businesses that we have to have their own separate blog I'm not much of a specialist type person, I like to be generalist and I like to learn a lot of things to have a broad knowledge of a lot of things. So I don't like to be very focused on every specific thing. So I don't feel comfortable having separate, all the businesses having separate blogs, which will be what many people will do, but it's just not me. So I want to have one blog where I can share my knowledge on all those, about all those topics. So Nassau will be this main blog, but we will link the online store to it so that, it, you know, they are all two, two separate entities, if I would put it that way. But now, 
came another issue. Will the online store be a new company or be under one of our businesses already? And each one of those businesses are very specific to an area. So, and then I start doing research on that because it's not just about business, you have to see the legal side of it. So when I file taxes, there is a code, a business code that goes with each one of those businesses. And, and I chose a very specific code for each one of them that is so hard to include something under that a business right now. So for example, Nina Soap, when I started, I even though it's a soap proprietor, I chose a business code and I filed it with the, the states and is me doing business as Nina Soap. So I had to file a form for that to, to be allowed to do business as Nina Soap. Because when you are a soap operator and you are now using your own name, you have to file a form with the state to be allowed to do business as DBA. So that's, and, and when I did that, I filed with the IRS as well and I chose a business code which is a manufacturer and now to my search i know that i was too too focused when i was doing that because in reality i'm a retailer because i manufacture this soap yes but i sell it to the customer so when you produce something and you interact with the final user of your product you are a retailer so it doesn't matter the different functions that you perform but as long as you interact with the final user of your product you are a retailer so if you are wondering in what category should you put your e-commerce because you need to be start you need to start thinking about that right now and so if you are you are starting your online store you need to sit down and think about how are you going to classify your business later when you file your taxes and i will put some uh, online uh, url some url on below in the description and as well i think i'll write a post and have it on my website on my blog so that you can go and click it because i you found it there and read it because i found some interesting information online that i like to show you i'm going to show you right now so that you go in and read it yourself so you can be a retailer so don't be too narrow in your in the code you are going to choose for your business now so that when you succeed and later you want to expand but you don't want to create other small businesses, you want to have everything under one entity, you have room to grow. And it's okay to have small entities, each one with their own online store, or you can have just one business with multiple websites, or multiple online store, each one focusing on a different product, or you can just have one retail online store where you sell different products so anything that works for you but don't narrow yourself too much in a way that when you want to include another product it will fall under another business code that you have to wonder if you should be able to include it in your online store business that you have or you have to create another one so at this point i think i will need to create not just a website but another business for our online store based on the information that i gather i think that will be the right things for me so let me show you and what my husband and i were talking about we have a business called liberal consulting llc and because consulting is about teaching advising and is about taxes and finances and business we thought maybe we can put the e-commerce underneath it but based on my research now i think it's just better we have another business for our e-commerce and the reason is the business code that i chose for liberal consulting is that service code 
So that's how focused and narrow I was with my choices. But now, Lipman Consulting, we wanted to expand it because how we visualized it at the beginning is not turning out to be really uh, what we wanted. So we wanted to expand our horizon, but because I chose a category from the start, I haven't even done any search to see if I can change this business code yet, which I think I should be able to. I have to check first to see if I have to uh, file a specific request to the IRS first or not. But I just prefer to create another business for our e-commerce and have it as a separate entity. And whether it's going to be a sub operator or an LLC or a corporation, we'll think about that later. But let me show you what I found out that can help you. So if you are wondering where your e-commerce will be, regardless of what you are selling, I will think you will be an online retailer. First, I will show you this form is from an IRS publication. And I've been going through it quite a bit to see what business code would be qualified for what I wanted to have. And I'll put this on my website so that under free download so that you'll be able to download it and go to it. And it's good to have it on hand if you want to start your own business so that you think ahead of time where you want to classify your business. So as you can see, let me go up a little bit to see the title of it. I can cut it off of this um, publication and have a separate slide. It's easy for you to locate it on under free download on my website, on the left side bar and download it and read through it. So that's code for codes for principal business activities and principal products or service. And as you can see, many online business will fall under some categories here so if you wanted to i know people are doing drop shipping or private labeling so if that's something you are thinking about this year and you are wondering if you should create a business or operate as a sole proprietor you have the choice you can start as a sole proprietor but based on the product you wanted to sell you might want to ask yourself if there will be a liability issue so anything you put on your skin or you swallow might have a higher liability issue. So going in as a sole proprietor is putting all your assets at risk. But if you don't have money to incorporate, you want it to go as a sole proprietor, so just see if the business will work for you. You want it to drop ship multiple products to see which one will work, that's fine. Everybody has his own uh, plan. But if you already start, some businesses and you have a brand that is different type of product that you wanted to go into then it's not just about selling trends you there is some specific product that you wanted to get into you wanted to drop ship or you wanted to private label then going in it as a sole proprietor if that has liability issue you might want to just create an nlc and depending on the state you are in an nlc might be more expensive than a corporation if that's the case, it's just better you create a corporation. But you, it's up to you how you want it to do it. But here is the thing. Sometimes you might want it to sell products like skincare product, lotion, or mascara, eye, anything cosme cosmetic related could fall under this category here. And I just highlight this because I want it to be more general than specific because if you start under this category but then you wanted to expand elsewhere selling supplements vitamin supplement for example then you might feel like 
this 44C to 120 may not include that product. So being more generalist might be the way to go. That's just my opinion. But then here is the things. Here, they are stores. You know, they are not really online stores. So if you are not going to have just a store, like in store, you want to operate fully online, that's, that's a e commerce. Then you'll ask yourself, what code do you really want to use? Because here's the thing. If you are selling things in this category of healthcare, and then you wanted to sell things that are clothing related, then it's now is a type of a different type of business. So we are thinking about the main business, the principal business, which one is generating more revenue for you. So if you have things that will fall under this category here, then that's another code. So and then you'll be wondering if you can put them all under one business since you are already using a specific code for that business. So that's the issue. That's the um, the issue that I have with my businesses. So I have a bis a two businesses in this category. So I try to highlight them. But then for our e-commerce, I was thinking about the department store since I want to include a lot of products. I just want to, I don't want to have a multiple uh, sites and multiple businesses because I, because I'm too narrow. So I selected this one, but then I keep looking because with my planners that fall under these categories of office suppliers. But then I wanted to sell other things that could be clothing related, which is up here. So I was talking, thinking about this uh, store with other miscellaneous store retailers code here to be more broad, to be broader. But then, or to be broad. And then we came here, we have non-store retailers. So usually retailers are classified store retailers or non-store retailers. But then I kept doing my research because I was not quite satisfied with what I was looking for. So I look on the non-store retailers here. As you can see, there is this code 454110, which is electronic shopping and mailing, mail order houses. Well, one of you, some of selling online could easily fall under this category. But then we have this one, 454390 other direct selling establishments that include door-to-door -door retailing and all that. So I was more thinking about using this code, which is broad, rather than using this one just in case. But either one of those two will work just fine, especially the top one. And I think that's my, that would be my advice if you are, you want to open an online store and e-commerce that might be the code to search around and probably use for your business instead of being more specific with any in-store retailing code here and if you are into blogging youtubing and broadcasting well Depending on how much audience or traffic you have, you might generate revenues there. So there, so you have this information area that you need to report that business of yours and anything that I came close to find that is related to uh, online information is this code here five one nine one zero zero other information services including news syndicates, libraries, internet publishing, internet publishing and broadcasting. You can look up a little bit about a lot of things that you might think you will fall under, they will say accept internet. Like here, publishing industry, they say accept internet. So it cannot really be there, even though they have book publish publishers here, they are not including any internet publishing there, but they are putting it here, other information services. So if you generate revenue through broadcasting or YouTube, 
and that's all you do it will be good to have that business using this code but if you want to op open an online store and i know that there is that concern whether you should open your online store on your blog or have a separate or having a separate from that so that's an issue but depending on what you are selling if your blog is blogging about your product then the product might be the code that you should use for your product might be the one that will be for the whole online store and the blog as well that's what i will think because your blog is supporting your online products but if your online products are different from what you blog about then that's two different things so as we continue so i told you already about this that you can use for online for online retailing which pretty much what we are when whether you produce the good yourself as long as you are collecting the um the sales the yeah the orders and you are fulfilling your orders yourself you are interacting with your customer you are the one interacting with your customers you are a retailer so your online retailing business or your e-commerce will use one of the codes here non-store retailers so let's not make that mistake and be more specific and choose a manufacturer which is somewhere up that i chose for nina soap when i start producing soap when nina soap right now is more about blogging and will easily fall under this other information service so there is another thing that i like to show you is this that i came across and I'm not going to summarize it. I'm just going to show it to you and I'll put the link under the description so that you can assess it yourself as well and read it. So let me... And that's IRS um, is from IRS website. Don't know if you saw it earlier, but that's from IRS website. And that's the URL, URL up there that I'll put under the description. But pretty much is defining what retail industry is and what that includes. All the way to the bottom is been talking about different type of expenses and how you should deduct them, which is very great. So it's good to visit this website and read it through if you are thinking about having your own online business. So where we are going to go is pretty much, let's get down here, is going to be, we just wanted to find out where you can be classified if you want to open your online store you want to have you want to sell your own product you make the product or you are buying it to reselling it or you want to private label or you want to drop ship you are a retailer so this reading this will help you decide what code you want to choose here a re in-store retailer or non-store retailers so as you can see here description of retailing so the main things here to to, to notice here is the retailer industry consists of businesses selling goods and i think originally uh, a lot of time you don't transform the good yourself you just buy and resell it but retailers a lot of time they interact with customers and they sell it in small quantity to to the customers so if we go back we go down 
That's pretty much what is important for me there to share, but you can read through it yourself. So they're talking about the size, the competition, the composition here. So let's take a look at the composition. So now is the retailer's larger segment consists of small independent stores usually operated by the owner. So what I like to point out here is some retailers are both manufacturers and retailers because they produce the product they sell. That's very important. That's what tells me that Nena Soap is a retailer, not a manufacturer. So the blurring of the lines between different types of retail, retail formats are fundamentally changed the industry. And if you, you go down, you will see here, retailers, regardless of other functions they perform, are still retailers when they interact with the final user of the product or service. So this should tell you where you should classify yourself, if you are a retailer or not. So if you are selling it to customers yourself, you might either produce the good, draw ship it, or private label it. As long as you are the one collecting the order and fulfilling it, you are a retailer. So if we go down the supply chain trends, so retailers now act as designers, suppliers, and important. Do you see it? That's very important. Which can put even your drop shipping business in this category because cause your customers think you are the one selling, sending them their goods or you are the one they will go to if they have an issue. So now you're a drop shipper. So merchandise is globally sourced from low-cost countries. You see, you are still under returning. Products are customized, which provides a point of competitive differentiation. So that's a little bit about private labeling here. E-commerce continue, continues to be bigger and take a larger share of retail sales. So they are including the e-commerce here. So let's go down and see what we can find again. Retail industrial demographic. So here, what I'd like to point out, let's see here, finished goods are purchased for resale. If that's what you are doing, yes, you are a retailer. So multiple channels such as in-store, if you have a store, you hire a building to sell in, that's in-store. Catalog and internet are used to make sales. A large number of sales transactions involve small quantity of merchandise purchased by the general public. So now you will see that some retailers a broad assortment of merchandise carried by product line and or department. So you might start small, but over time you might grow and try to include other products. So consumers, consumer preferences are now constant. Mekanda's assortment and presentation are constantly changing. What I'd like to point out more here, let me see here. So, yeah, the main things is those two, A and B here. That's what is more important for me here. If you go to retail industrial classif classification, you will see NAICS, which is the one that I show you. I think they are the one grouping based on these. But that's pretty much what it's trying to refer to. So you have, so they have sector 44 and 45 for retail. Let's go back and check to see. And then they say here that retail consists of two principal type of establishment, store retailers and non-store retailers. So let's go back to see 44 and 45. Okay, you can see that 45, 45 is where that non-store retailers are. 45, 45, 45, 45, 45. So let's see the retail. Even some store retailers are under 45 as well. 
45.3 and non-retailers are 45.4 so let's go up a little bit to see 44 where 44 start Forty four, and as you can see here, retail trade forty four, and they go down, they are very specific. So, if you have a store and you are just very specific, that's all you sell, or that's why your main sales comes from, that's the code you use. But today's Retailing, retail stores are trying to be broad, so including more products. That's what bring us as e-commerce owners to be careful about the code that we are trying to use. And I thought the instruction, the test here will tell us more about the code, but they didn't. But just know that you have to choose between store retailers and non-store retailers. So if you are a non-store retailer because you operate online, so you need to choose a code from that session, not a code from the retailer store that um, uh, where is more specific. So retailer store, they have all those classifications, those descriptions here. Point of sale locations, located and designed to attract a high volume of working customers so and I'm not going to talk about that much because it's more about having a store building location now let's talk about non retailers here non retailers are similar to a store retailers which is organized to serve the general public but they their retailing method differ non store retailers are typical typically grouped as follow electronic commerce e-commerce catalog and mail order retailers papers and electronic catalogs direct retailers door-to-door -door solicitation retailer service by other technical advisor program includes and then they list all of those as well but what is interesting us is this one non-store retailers that's where your e-commerce will be so if you are thinking about opening an online store, whether you want to go in as a sub operator or as an NLC, you might need to choose a code. Whether now when you are filing, you are registering your business name or whether or when you are filing your taxes, you will be asked to choose a business code. Just know that your code will fall under non-store retailers where e-commerce is classified by the IRS and non-store retailer you'll find those four codes to choose from and the main one the first one 454110 will be the best one to use unless you want to use the last one 4543 nine zero to just say other direct selling establishment that's the main things i wanted to talk about the second thing the next thing that i like to point out is and i just remember that when i was think talking about so proprietor or resisting your business if you are wondering whether you should start as an nlc or as a sole proprietor well you have the option if you don't know for sure your business will succeed which i know it will succeed you just have to believe it, believe in yourself and with online commerce you can try different things so you can go in as a sole proprietor and change it or if you just want to be legal from the start you can go in as a llc but maybe i will have another video for that but i want to point out that llc as an nlc you can you are not an employee you, you no, you are not a, yeah you are not an employee if you 
pay yourself, that will be a draw. So you cannot treat, you cannot pay yourself as an employee, uh, and you can file as you can register a business, file as LLC, but request to be taxed as an S corp. If you treat your LLC as an S corp in the eyes of IRS, you will treat yourself as an employee and you will collect a salary. The drawback of that is, well, cela c'est the drawback. The drawback of that is when your business grow as the employee and the major share owner of the business, you cannot deduct benefit French French benefits. They will, you can deduct them. I mean, you can take those benefits, but they will be added. You will add them back to your income when you file your taxes so you cannot really benefit from that your employee might but now anyone that has more than i believe two percent of ownership of the business or something like that so that's the drawback and the good news with the c corp is the s corp is you will collect salary you will pay salary to yourself and you will pay social security on that salary not on all your profits but just on your salary so that means your profit you can take your profit out as dividend and you will be taxed on that but you are not going to pay social security and medicare on that part of your revenue just on your salary that's the good things turning your llc into an S corp instead of doing business just as LLC because as LLC all your profits will roll back to your personal taxes and you will pay social security and Medicaid on all your revenues you, you are not going to pay salary to yourself but every all your profits you will pay you will, uh, pay social security and Medicaid on that just like sole proprietor LLC as an S corp, all the all your revenue will roll back to your taxes as well. But your salary will be charged social security tax and Medicaid tax. But your profits will be taxed and ordinary dividend tax, which will be your tax bracket. If you go in as a as a corporation C corp, which is more complicated, but has more tax advantages as well. You will collect, you will pay tax to, you will pay salary to yourself, and you will collect. Um, you can get French benefits as well, without reporting that back into your, you know, without adding it back to your income and file taxes and pay taxes on that. So you can do that. But the drawback of C corp is you will pay business tax on your profit, but then when you distribute the dividend. The profit in form of dividend, you will pay tax on that at your tax bracket. So that is why people shy away from the C corp. But this good news with C corp is is a totally different entity from you, which give you more um, protection than LLC. So you have all those options, but it might be a little bit more challenging to. Um, create it will be good to hire a lawyer to create a corporation if you want to go that route to file a register that with the state and you can go from there but then if you LLC you can file that yourself if you want but some state LLC might be more expensive than those um, creating a corporation a C corp but those are the options that you have there is few more as well like partnership and all that but LLC is limited liability company which is pretty much I mean good to go with instead of just a partnership but those are the options but the main things we want to talk about today is your e-commerce should be treated as non-store retailer and you need to use the proper business code for that when you are doing your taxes. And whether you want to go in as a sole proprietor or 
a legal entity is totally up to you. Thank you for watching. I'm Afiavi Ojuna Marine Net Liberman, creator of Marine Net Liberman's YouTube channel and owners of Nina Soap. And my website is ninasoap.com.